How would you attract new employers to the island and improve job prospects for our residents? Well, I don't feel that this is particularly one for me. Um, it's the county council is more involved than I am on that particular area. But there are some things which I do. For instance, on um, on Wednesday this week, I took um, a number of number of um, people who work on the island. Um, we went up to London. We spoke to a minister, and we did a lot of things behind the scenes to try to make him, make them feel more secure in what they wanted to do. And most of these things are decided by individuals. They're not decided by government. But the, the, the government and members of parliament can sometimes push in the right direction. I, I guess it's a lot of it's going to do, to do with the demographics. Um, and I, we do attract, we all already are a very... Uh, imbalanced I think there's an awful lot of people who are older who come here and retire so I think the sort of issue for us is about trying to attract younger people here who want to work here and live here uh, and I, I think that's the real sort of I suppose my major concern and I think that we need a real focus on the future. There's a danger in just asking people to come to the island with opportunities for employment. I think the emphasis needs to be on homegrown um, jobs. I think if we ask people to move to the island with the opportunity of increasing employment, then a lot of people will move to the island. And I think uh, that doesn't help the people who are already here. I think the, the, the priority ought to be on encouraging homegrown activity in terms of maritime, industry, aerospace, and all the services that we currently provide. Unemployment of the young. There's no reason why people should have to leave the island just to get a job. We, we need to concentrate lots of resources on that. Well, plainly, I think it is important that the um, government and the council work together in to, to facilitate um, um, good employers coming to the Isle of Wight. I think there is a role there for the MP as well. I think the Regional Development Agency has um, done some good work in ensuring that there is a, a, a grant and climate for um, research and development on the Isle of Wight. That needs to continue, and I think it's very important that there's good liaison on all of that. The UK has an ageing society, and the Isle of Wight in particular has a higher proportion than most of retirees. Which of your party's policies will directly benefit these people? Well, uh, again, I, I, I guess um, we're looking at health. I mean, we're, we're very much, I think, and I suppose you know, maybe your question later on is about preventative medicine, but I think it's so important to keep people in their homes, keep people active, offer things like uh, leisure activities, sports facilities. I mean, I play tennis, and, and I play tennis with people who are over 80, uh, which is fantastic because they're pretty healthy people. So I think all those sort of things we need to encourage. Um, our uh, environmental, um, certainly with looking at um, better housing, I think is a real issue as well. I think that the sort of, again, looking at, at conserving energy, we ought to be spending more money on insulation, etc., so that people are in better houses, um, older and younger people, but certainly for the older people. And I think that's the win win situation if they're going to save energy as well as save money. People are living longer, the lifespan is increasing. The difficulty that occurs with that is that the health span has not increased to keep up. The policies that are going to most help those who are uh, older people is going to be those related to the health service. The Green Party has strong policies to maintain the National Health Service. We resist privatisation of the health service, but if we can maintain uh, the NHS in good condition, then that will be the strongest policy that will help the older people on the island. You're no doubt aware that the United Kingdom Independence Party is committed to withdrawing the Britain from the EU. This would mean that uh, we would receive an independence dividend of approximately £2,000 per family per month. This we can use in increasing state pensions and providing additional care for the elderly and infirm.
Well, I think there's already been a lot of work on that. I think I think um, the um, winter fuel allowance has benefited thousands of people on the Isle of Wight concessionary fare scheme. But beyond that, I think it, what, one very exciting development is that the um, Labour government is looking to develop a national care service, which is plainly absolutely essential for our older people and, and the most vulnerable elderly in particular. I think the personalisation agenda can be good in that, in, the, in that that people can hopefully decide their own kind of package of care but um, plainly all of that there needs to be proper consultation and the individual needs taken into account. Government policy is that complementary therapies should be integrated into orthodox medicine and be more widely available as a treatment choice for patients. Preventative medicine is particularly important uh, for a healthier old age. What is your opinion on this? Well, my opinion is it's a good thing. We ought to push that, those things. But the most important thing is we've got to take the decisions for these things locally, not nationally. And that's what I think will be a big change in the government, um, that many decisions which now are taken at some Whitehall desk will be moved into local decision-making. And I think that's very important. I'm all for it. I think that you know we save you save so much money if you can prevent people from becoming ill or going into hospital. I mean, you know, I don't actually know what the figures are, but but you know, to, it costs us lots more to keep to have people go into hospital. So obviously, it's much better to keep people in their own homes to keep them active. I think with uh, alternative medicines, um, also I, I, I think that. There ought to, people ought to be able to have the choice if they want to. And of course at the moment we haven't got that choice, so I would certainly support that. I've benefited from some of the complementary therapies, so have my children. Um, I think the NHS and the use of the complementary therapies in the NHS has to be evidence-based. There's currently an argument to suggest that homeopathy may not be as effective. Therapies, if a strong bond is developed between the therapist and the patient, then there's a certain curative aspect to that. Preventive medicine are two distinct things, but I'm fully in favour for both of them, of both of them, on the assumption that they're administered by competent um, practitioners who have some experience in it. I think complementary medicine, there is a place for that. I think the key um, focus of, of the National Health Service should be conventional medicine, but there is a place for complementary therapy. I think in terms of prevention, I think prevention is better than cure. I think, I think it is important that the government does encourage healthy lifestyle in terms of issues such as smoking, alcohol and exercise and healthy eating. So I think there is a role on that because plainly, um, as I said earlier, prevention is, is better than cure. The Isle of Wight Council is proposing a cut to social care funding which will force many people into residential homes and with just a little bit of extra help they can live independently. What is your policy regarding the provision of care for the elderly and those with learning difficulties? Well the first thing is we, uh, with the council actually, did get money to everyone who was at home, is at home, and, and over 80. That was a considerable change to what had gone before. Second, uh, and you would be pleased to know that the government has actually infused in all that sort of thing. Um, but there are, there are problems about the amount of money that's available at the moment. And I believe uh, Dawn Cousins had put an extra £750,000 into the looking after people. Um, so we've got to push for more of that. But we've also got to understand that we can save money and still put money in the centre of things. The most important are the individuals, not people in council houses, councils, um, anywhere, and certainly not the island. It's prevention, I think, and, and looking at the, the proposed cuts that the council are going to make, um, for the supporting people budgets uh, and I, I went to visit um, some people who have got learning differences in, in, who, are, who are living independent, independently but they've got support of workers and they would not be able to do that if they didn't have that support uh, from the floating, floating support services. So I, I just think it, it, it's a, 
I think that the people who are making these decisions ought to actually go out there and talk to these people and see what the impact is going to be because again um, they say that the national health saves nearly four pounds on every pound that's spent in supporting people so I think it's you know that it, it, to me I think it's a disaster waiting to happen if they withdraw that funding. The Isle of Wight's one of the few local authorities where the provision of social care for the over 80s is, is at no cost. In that sense, it's a more expensive option which the Isle of Wight Council has undertaken. But I'm concerned that they, there might be a cut on the supporting people budget. It is important that people live independently and the supporting people budget is helping that. It has been proven to be the most cost-effective approach to supporting people who've got um, mental health or other difficulties, and I would not wish to see any of those people policy is that uh, this is a matter for courses for courses where people are able to live in their own homes without uh, being a danger either to themselves or to the public they should be encouraged to do so where necessary adequate provision should be made for them to move into a residential home or sheltered accommodation well, I've been absolutely appalled at the scale of the cuts which have recently been <coughs> announced by the council, and my own trade union has been active in the forefront against those. I think it's a real worry in terms of some of the most vulnerable sections of the Isle of Wight community, mentally ill, people with learning disability, people um, who, with the homeless, the elderly. I think there is a real worry about that, and we must concentrate resources on those most vulnerable sections of the community. Education is an important issue to families on the island. What is your position on the reorganisation of schools, in particular the move from small local schools to larger, less accessible ones? Well, I, I must say that, that it's not my, my favourite. I'd like smaller schools if one can have them, but let's be fair, most of the schools which were threatened with closure have not been closed. Uh, Yarmouth, um, Shalfleet, um, Chillington and so on, they're still there and I hope that they will continue to be there, but it would not be It is um, an improvement from what was originally planned. We've always supported uh, keeping village schools. I think it's very important that they're the sort of heart and, of the community and, and I think that if we lose them, there'll be some of these villages will, will just become sort of corridor places to live, which I think will be devastating for those people who live there. Um, so I don't support the, the, the bigger sort of primary schools, you know, moved into urban area. Again, I think the thing that worries me a lot is that um, if we look in a couple of years' time and the funding that they're looking at for schools is going to be reduced, people have to stand up and fight to keep their local schools now. And, I, uh, you know, I, 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 that again worries me. I think that they may be looking for cuts in the future. So I think that if we can look at ways to perhaps federate schools, um, you know, to, to make efficiencies in, if you want to keep your local schools in your local communities, but if, you know, if it's necessary perhaps to have a head teacher that looks after two or three schools and share, you know, teaching, share good practice between those schools, then that, that's what we need to be doing. Um, but certainly I don't support very large schools and I don't support very large secondary schools either because I think that people get lost in the system. That debate has been going on for many, many years. We're in the middle of it now. There's a plan to cut out some of the volunteers. Uh, I think the difficulty with the education on the island, and both my children have been through the education system on the island, is there is a lack of aspiration. I don't think the tiers are the most important uh, issue which needs to be addressed. It needs to be the standards of the education which is provided. I think there needs to be a, a significant increase in the expectation of the education system, and in turn, we then need to have a higher expectation of the students going through that system. They can achieve at a much higher level than they have done hitherto. Uh, my uh, personal belief is that the small schools are too small, but the, uh, in a sense that the primary schools are too small, but the secondary schools are too large. I believe that uh, uh, children should not have to work or learn in year groups of possibly three or more years where uh, they cannot um, learn social skills with their peers.
Well, I think it is a real worry in terms of how the school reorganisation is shaping up. I mean, there are quite a number of jobs at risk, both teaching and, and support staff. And I think there's a real worry that the morale in middle schools in particular over the next 18 months is going to be um, very low. And, and that in itself could have a damaging effect on the standards of education. I think it is important that everyone has got access to a good local school. And in, I, I do have concerns about the proposals. And I would say that the Labour Party has been the only party locally that has opposed the structural change because we don't believe the problem on the Isle of Wight is structural. We believe there are other, other reasons why we haven't been performing as well as we might. How would you address the issue that following reorganisation, uh, more people will need to drive their children to school when at present they can walk? Well, I th again, I agree with you there's the problem, but let's be fair again. Let's look at each town. Most towns have their own, not only primary schools, but high, high schools. So we aren't encouraging people to travel unless it's really necessary. There are some places which are, which are going to lack um, a school in the future, but most of them will still have a small school. I mean, that is an issue, and I think that uh, that's, again, why I very much support uh, keeping village schools because I think that um, it's a for all sorts of reasons for the community and you know for keeping people walking to school etc I think there's going to be a loss of things like preschools as well actually if they close small schools um, I guess that we should be looking at ways to if they're going to run buses then they should open it up to people who, who would like to use those buses rather than be restrictive and you know you have to pay huge amounts of money to actually get your child to school if you can if it could be done on a, no, a nominal fee then I think that you know that there's an opportunity there for more children to be able to use the bus service. The Green Party is clearly not in favour of additional uh, vehicular traffic. Um, it's unfortunate that in a rural environment that uh, children do have to be bused through or, or the parents have to take their children to, to school in, in vehicles, in cars. In the longer term, hopefully a lot of those people will be electric, electric vehicles and I think the, the island is ideal for that kind of uh, electric vehicle use. It's unfortunate that we're not using the community uh, as well. I think that there's great opportunity for more car sharing to, to take place on the island. The Isle of Wight is a very safe place. We need to plan it, we need to be careful, but it's another option that needs to be explored. Well, this is the situation that has been caused by the Isle of Wight Council because of the rush through and ill thought out reorganisation of the school. Nobody is against the reorganisation of schools, but it should have been done properly, and it hasn't been. Uh, lots of parents will not be able to put their foot, will have split siblings between schools until it's sorted out. Obviously, over a period of time, this will adjust itself, but at the moment, um, I have no easy solution for this because it's in the hands of the Isle of Wight Council who really need to get their act together. I think that's another unfortunate aspect of, of the proposal because as um, I said in answer to the last question, I think we need a good local school which is accessible by people on foot which, which leads to people um, interfacing at the school gate and, and really builds the community as well and we need to do everything we can to cut back on car journeys rather than add to them because our island roads are already very congested particularly um, at, the, at the time of the school run. Mm -hmm. Finally, is there anything else you'd like to say to your constituents? The most important thing is we're going to have an, uh, an election. I'm here all the year round, but I'm here particularly at election time to understand what people think and respond and give them the answers as soon as I can, which uh, we've got to get out to them. I, I wanted to stand as a, for, for MP for the island and only for the island, you know, because I do feel quite passionately about the island and I think that the island needs somebody who is actually going to try and strive to get things to be done on the island and improve the lot for, for people. Um, and I think that that needs to have somebody who is a good campaigner and you know, we'll work very hard for, to, to, to draw things into the island. We need more resources. Um, we need to Employment is this big issue. I think that there are all sorts of things still to be done. So that's why I would like to be given the opportunity to do it. Okay. Come and join the party. It's, uh, it, it's going to be uh, 
an interesting campaign. We want a lot of support to come and help us with, uh, with canvassing and with getting the word out. Most importantly, we need the Green Vote to come out strongly on polling day. Yes, I would like to say that um, this is an election that everyone should be uh, voting. The major parties, the Liberals, the Democrats and the Conservatives, have all been guilty of, of their MPs putting their snouts in the trough. We need some honest people in Parliament and uh, I hope that um, UKIP will be able to provide many of them. Well, I, I believe, you know, um, as a born and bred islander, I believe I understand the islands and its concerns, islanders and their concerns. I meet thousands of people each year in the course of my job, which is involved in representing people, largely in the public service, but also in, in vol the voluntary sector as well. I believe I've got a good understanding of Isle of Wight life and the concerns of ordinary people. I hope people will feel able to support me in the campaign. This is Louisa Hillard reporting for Venn the TV.